Hello, my witches and wizards. This is Professor Rowan. I'm coming to you to talk about the brilliant event, uh, the Quidditch event part two, that is running from May 19th through May 26th, starting at 11 a.m. my time. In the first week of this brilliant event, the house cup is the piece that was missing, and Headmistress McGonagall thanked us for finding the cup, and in, at the end of the event, invited us to come to Hogwarts for the final game of the season. From what it looks like from the Foundables, the Calamity will be messing with the final game of the season. Including, potentially whisking away, Headmistress McGonagall herself. This brilliant event is designed to be able to do it from home, just like the last one, which does mean the 1.5k port keys and also things that you're gonna need to use the tonic for trace detection, let's just be frank. However, since the night bus is now working, you will be using the brilliant runestones from this event to get one of the registry images. Before we get on to what's going on in the registry or the task list, let's first talk about what other things are going on with this event. First off, all of the energy on the map will be worth five spell energy. So if you're able to find Reginald or one of his family or friends, um, they will be bringing five spell energy with them. Several different magical games and sports foundables will be more prevalent on the map. Um, none of them are really high level difficulty, but there will be a lot of them. These include the magical megaphone, the beater's bat, and the quaffle. Also, you'll be finding a lot more of Hagrid's umbrella, which is not in any way magical games and sports, but is related in the spell you have to cast. There also will be a free store pack involving 50 energy and the ingredients to brew a tonic for trace detection. Yet again, we will have two brilliant foundables in the wild, which makes our total for this event four, which means that you might have to look a little harder to find the one you're looking for since you'll also be finding ones that have nothing to do with this week. In the wild, you will be finding a brilliant Luna Lovegood, the Quidditch fan version, as well as the brilliant Bludger. You will need 15 of both of these in order to place the image the first time. The tasks will be giving you a Gryffindor beater and a Slytherin chaser. The port keys will be getting you the Quidditch scorekeeper, and you will be needing five of those. Those port keys will also again be taking you to the Hogwarts, the what do you call those things? Locker rooms? Or I guess in this situation it's a locker tent? Um, I don't know if it's going to be taking you to the exact same one as last time though, because last time was very definitely from the robes, the Hufflepuff and the Ravenclaw battle. So I don't know if the Gryffindor and the Slytherin are going to be using the same tent. I'm assuming that it's going to be the same tent, however. And finally, using the brilliant runestone in a wizarding challenge does not have to be through the night bus, but it does make it a lot easier for those of us who can't leave our home. Um, that one will be Quidditch Fan McGonagall. You will be needing three of her. Now as for the quests, they seem fairly straightforward. Um, all of them can be completed from home. You will probably need to use a trace detection to do some of them. and. Several of them are one helps feed into another, but I'll point those out when we get there. Quest 1 actually feels an awful lot like Quest 1 from Week 1 of the Brilliant Event. In fact, the rewards are the same. For Quest 1, you need to earn 1,000 Wizarding XP. That will get you 6 Snowdrop, which is great. I haven't seen Snowdrop. Well, <laughs> the only Snowdrop I've gotten recently is the tiny bit I got during community day and I use that all up. Returning five of the brilliant bludgers will be getting you Reem blood. Finally, collecting off of the map two times, um, either ingredients, port keys, or energy, anything off of the map two times will get you a strong stimulo potion. 
don't have to brew it. It gives you the potion flat out. Completing quest one will give you 550 wizarding XP, 50 brilliant family XP, two restricted section books, one dark detector, and spell energy. Quest two of four is where we first see a lot of the synergy that has a tendency to happen in these brilliant event quests. For example, you need to cast Flippiendo 10 times. Doing that will get you one silver key. Now you may be thinking, that's an awful lot of Flippiendo to be casting. However, that is the spell needed to overcome several of the magical games and sports foundables confoundable. And you do need to also, for the next part of this quest, return four of the magical games and sports foundables. That will get you two leaping toadstool. Finally, you need to return seven magical megaphones. Wait a second. Magical megaphones are magical game and sports. You only need four of the magical game and sports, but you need seven of the megaphones. So getting the seven megaphones will just get that for that other one completely done for you. Returning the seven magical megaphones gives you one brain elixir. The rewards for completing quest two are as follows. 750 wizarding XP, 75 brilliant family XP, three restricted books, the brilliant Gryffindor beater registry image, and 10 more spell energy. Moving on to quest three of four, per usual quest three has a tendency to put something in that will slow you down a little bit. This time is, again, no exception. Though all of these things on their own are relatively simple, it's not going to be something that you can complete in five minutes. First off, you need to return five beater bats. Not the beaters themselves, the beater bats. With the little BDSM goblin. That will get you one unicorn hair. Next, you need to return 10 of the brilliant Luna love goods. That will get you one potent to stimula potion. Lastly, you need to pick up spell energy, port keys, ingredients, what have you, off of the map seven times. That will get you one silver key. This is definitely the part of the quest where I feel using a tonic for trace detection will really help you get through. And if you're like me and ingredients and port keys and things just don't show up around your home, you might need to do a late night, early morning walk or perhaps try to find some on your way to the grocery store and back. Your rewards for completing quest three are 1,250 wizarding XP, 75 brilliant XP, five restricted books, and 10 energy. Now on to quest four. This one's going to require you to return 10 quaffles. Luckily, it's probably going to be boosted and it's a lot easier to catch than that blink and snitch. Returning the quaffles will get you one spell book. You also need to cast Flippiendo 15 times, which thankfully it is the spell for many of the boosted foundables. That will also get you one spell book. And finally, use a tonic for trace detection two times. This is another one of those synergy things. Those two tonic for trace detections will really help you with the other two parts. That will also get you one spell book. That's right. Three parts of this quest mean three spell books. Your rewards for completing quest four are five restricted section books, 50 gold, the brilliant Slytherin chaser registry image, the portrait sticker for the Quidditch captain for both the Slytherin and the Gryffindor teams. So that's two separate um, ministry ID stickers and 10 more spell energy. And now on to the bonus challenge. I will admit, I'm not as excited about the bonus challenge this time as I was last time. Because last time had a lot better rewards. Those hard to find books were helpful. That being said, this brilliant event bonus task isn't anywhere nearly as great of rewards. To the point where I'm upset that I didn't get to finish the bonus challenge last time because I could not get the snitches I needed. I'm not going to be upset if I don't finish the bonus tasks this time. But if you have the time, here are the bonus tasks. Again, there's a lot of synergy between these, but you'll see that in a moment. Earning 10,000 wizarding XP will get you three silver keys. Using the tonic for trace detection three times will get you one whole dottle drot. 
returning 30 brilliant traces will get you one potent to stimulo potion. Cast Flippy Endo 45 times. Ugh. That will get you two dark detectors. Finally, returning 20 magical game and sports foundables, doesn't matter which one, any of those, will get you one powdered dragon claw ingredient. Now you may be saying, that's an awful lot of XP that I need to collect, or that's an awful lot of brilliance or flippy endos. Thankfully, they do feed into each other. The XP is gotten from getting the magical games and sports, which several of them are the flippy endo. You, you see where I'm going with that. But when you have to collect 10,000 wizarding XP to get part of the bonus challenge, receiving for your first reward 2,000 wizarding XP just doesn't seem as great. But the rewards are 2,000 wizarding XP, 100 brilliant family XP, five more spell books, 30 spell energy, and an achievement badge. Now, I've done my profession as complete. I have have no more use for scrolls or restricted tomes or spell, en spell books unless I decide to cross train in another profession. I'm using a whole lot more than just 30 spell energy to be able to accomplish the bonus tasks. Once I use my three rune stones, I'm not going to care anymore about the brilliant family XP. And the 2000 wizarding XP, especially since that can't be doubled with a brain elixir. Eh. So the only thing there that I might potentially want is the achievement badge, which I'm kind of a completionist. I do love getting all the achievements and, and badges and things like that, but Ah, considering how complicated it was for last brilliant event, I don't know if I'm going to do the bonus event for this one. Um, however, that one was entirely complicated because of the snitch. So maybe I will, maybe I won't. I haven't really decided yet. It is honestly depending a little bit on how I feel. I have not been feeling well lately. Not that kind of cough, cough, not feeling well lately. More like, oh, my tummy not feeling well lately. And now the tips and tricks for focusing on the four main parts of the quest. Now that going back to a fortress is part of our daily tasks again because of the night bus, make sure you're using your brilliant rune stone so that you can get all of McGonagall as quickly as possible. You're more likely to get McGonagall from using the brilliant rune stone from my experience from tower chambers three and higher. Personally, once I've gotten all of the ones I need, I just don't use any more of those rune stones. And once the brilliant event is over, I have a tendency to delete them. For the port keys, make sure your golden key is in a port key as soon as possible. And if you need to or want to, those silver keys that you're getting from the quests will be helpful in getting those port keys done in time. Make sure you have your adventure sync on so that wandering around the house, doing the laundry, dusting, vacuuming, all of those things will count towards the distance on your port keys. Also, as a reminder, once this event is over, we do have one more event coming up in May. There will be a Quidditch Wizarding Weekend, May 29th through June 1st. I honestly know nothing about it other than the it's called the quidditch wizarding weekend so one can assume there's going to be an awful lot of quidditch related things going on again not a big fan of sports ball so i'm not going to be able to help you much with figuring out how that works like i seriously don't understand the rules of the game however except expect to see things involving the Chudley Cannons players, the Quidditch World Cup, things along those lines, not high school level, but professional level players. Also, if you need any tips and tricks on how to work through the night bus um, to get those brilliant McGonagall's, I do have a video for that as well that I just released. It should be linked somewhere around here. Still learning how to do that part. How about you, my witches and wizards? Are you looking forward to this next brilliant event? Are you planning on taking a breather from the bonus tasks as well? Or are you too much of a completionist that you can't let that one badge go? Let me know all that in the comments below. Also, please, if you find these helpful, like, subscribe, 
share. It really does help us out. Our channel's one year anniversary is going to be May 17th, Sunday, the day right after Community Day. And I am so grateful and humbled for those of you who join us, those of you who have given me such wonderful feedback on ways that you find this helpful. And I'm really loving the community that we are building together. So thank you all so very much. Also, thank you so much to our patrons. You guys make this stuff possible. And as always, my witches and wizards, stay safe. That means keep your eyes peeled, your ears open, and your wands ready.